All right. Welcome, 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 welcome uh, to our session again today. Yeah, it was good having all of you uh, join us here today. We are very much excited uh, to have this session today. And um, we will be having um, uh, an amazing, one of the most interesting sessions from an amazing gentleman uh, with regards to our email design system, which is very crucial for every business, uh, no matter part of the world you operate from. Uh, today, uh, we will be um, having no other person, uh, but uh, one of the finest in the industry, uh, Roland. Uh, and Roland will be, um, he's a CEO, co-founder of Chameleon.io, and um, he has been um, helping uh, several digital teams transform from their, their traditional linear email creation process into a no-code agile email workflow. So um, Roland knows how to um, expedite and get results in 10x faster uh, email production, and eventually um, you will have um, records of um, uh, amazing improvements in your email marketing um, ROIs. So he has been in the industry for more than seven years now, and he spent that seven years uh, focused on understanding how digital teams imagine ideal email production process, and also um, how he helps them to scale. So um, he and his team um, have managed to build the email design platforms of uh, their business, uh, their customers' dreams. So uh, today uh, we'll be having um, this um, session uh, with Roland, and um, he's uh, based in Hungary, uh, a father and uh, a husband, father of two wonderful kids. And uh, so uh, without um, much, um, uh, of, um, taking much of your time, I want to uh, quickly roll uh, uh, for uh, Roland to take over um, the session. Thank you very much. So the next uh, voice you'll be hearing uh, will be that of uh, Roland. He will be taking us on why should you have an email design system. Um, for your questions, please use the question and answer. Uh, you can chat as well on the chat platforms and. Um, we will be uh, commencing the session immediately. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm Roland the CEO and co-founder of Chameleon IO. Thanks for all of you for joining this session. I'm pretty sure that by the end of it, you have a clear understanding of email design systems, which I had no clue about 15 years ago when I started my email marketing journey. Life was so much easier than for email marketers like me. Our lives just became so much more complicated and it takes almost twice the time to complete a single email project nowadays. Simply because email marketers need to take care of so many things including responsive email design, email client tests, personalization tags, segmentation, automations and on top of that a tedious review and approval process. This all causes a single email creation project to take over two weeks according to Litmus' most recent study. I had calls with hundreds of email teams personally in the past four years and pretty much all of them were looking for ways to improve their efficiency. They all wanted to be able to create more emails in less time. But how? Key players in the email builder space all agree that the basis of an efficient email workflow is always a solid email design system. But what does really an email design system mean? It is a set of design standards and reusable visual elements that help brands maintain consistency and reduce friction in their different content creation workflows. This might sound complicated, but bear with me for another 15 minutes and it will make complete sense to you, I promise. <laughs> if you are not a design nerd, you might not know that the design system concept was first coined by Brad Frost in his book on atomic design in 2013. He pretty much figured out, no matter how complex an interface is, it's possible to break it down into small fundamental building blocks 
called atoms. Everything in our universe is built up from tiny little atoms. And if we apply the same terminology to web interfaces or emails, atoms are our simple HTML tags such as text, images, buttons, labels, links, and so forth. We can combine these simple elements together into molecules and larger organisms that are relatively complex modules such as headers, footers or header units if I want to translate it into email's terms again. I don't want this to turn into chemistry class, so I use human terms in the rest of the presentation, don't worry. So design system should include design standards such as fonts, colors, combined with simple visual elements like texts, images, buttons, spacers, that all can be compiled into blocks or modules. It should also include templates that cover the most common business use cases necessary for a brand. These all need to be paired with a clear documentation on the intended use of each element, because without that, he would end up with a similar anarchy as without an email design system of any sort. There are clear benefits of having an email design system in place, and the most important is improved efficiency thanks to the fact that less technical people can, can quickly create and update emails using the predefined design elements. It frees up a lot of design and developer resources once everything is clearly defined. It creates unified language inside the organization and distributed teams likewise. It ensures brand consistency among different email types and departments and serves as an excellent educational tool and reference for new employees, especially junior ones. Of course, there are some downsides too. The biggest one is that it takes dedicated designer and or developer resources to create and maintain a solid email design system. It also takes time to teach team members how to use the design system and to adapt it properly. And after all, it limits the designer's creativity a bit and that's something that many designers hate to be completely frank with you. But in the long run, they typically see more benefits than downsides, especially because they need to do less pixel pushing since marketers can take care of most content creation projects using the predefined design elements. As a result, designers can deal with the big picture instead of daily back and forth with marketers. So, how can you create your design system? At first, I would advise you to start with a design audit. It simply means that you should collect all your existing web and email assets, templates, campaigns, whatnot. Analyze your marketing metrics and make sure to highlight your most successful design elements that brought the highest click-through rates and conversions. Based on these, you can make a smart decision and figure out which visual elements you want to keep, change or get rid of completely. Once you are done with the initial audit, make sure to do your research in your specific industry. Check out your competitors and figure out if you need any new elements or modules to meet your email use cases. It can easily happen that this will be the right time for you to think through if you'd like to standardize your transaction emails too. I think it's important to highlight because I see many brands send quite different transaction and promotional emails, most likely because they use different systems to create those messages. I would advise you to stick with a single email design system that includes all your necessary assets and templates. My favorite sites for design inspiration are really good emails, mailed, email love or dribble. All of these have a bunch of examples from some of the best brands in the world. As a next step, you should lay the foundations and collect all your brand specific image assets such as logo variations, icons, then define your color palette for key elements, highlights, backgrounds and of course text too. When it comes to fonts, you need to clarify your preferred font family for headings, paragraphs and links too. But please note that only web safe fonts work in email clients consistently. If you use a custom font or Google font, it will only display for those readers who use iOS, Apple Mail, Outlook 2000 or Outlook.com. The rest will see a fallback font that you need to define clearly in your email code. But don't worry if your audience will never see your lovely custom brand front in your emails. Believe me, it's more important for them to receive an easily readable and accessible email rather than a purely image-based message that's hard to read on mobile devices. So once you lay down the, these foundations, 
you would ideally end up with a mood board like this and a collection of your email templates and modules too. This is the time to categorize your assets and agree on the naming conventions you want to use in your design system. Naming convention matters a lot actually because without it you would end up with messy names and duplicates all the time. The best practice advice is to use lowercase letters to avoid confusion. Don't use overcomplicated abbreviations, instead use short, simple, clear human words and uh, follow a commonly agreed logical hierarchy, for example the one shown on this slide, name slash type slash size slash color and optionally state. There are a few common terms we see appear in design systems, such as mobile, desktop for categories, header, footer, hero unit for types, large, medium, small for sizes, and of course left, center, and right for alignments. If you combine these words together in a logical order, everybody will be able to figure out how the bottom primary dark element will look like, even without actually seeing it. An important next step is to decide what sort of email width and grid system you would want to use. I see that still most brands use a 600 pixel email width, but if you want to go wider and use bigger white space around your email content, you can go up to 720 pixels. Just make sure that you don't end up with too long, hardly readable lines of text when you go wider. When it comes to the grid system, best practice advice by email geeks like Mark Robbins, hey Mark, is to use an 8 pixel grid. It means to you that you should use 8 pixel or the multiples of it for images, text, columns, paddings or margins for example. It makes sense because the majority of popular screen sizes are divisible by 8. So if you stick with the 8 pixel grid, your visuals won't look distorted on most devices. Once you lay down the foundations, the easiest next step is to collect your image sets and define the preferred image sizes, ratios, resolution, image weights, for example, 200 kilobytes max for simple images and one or two megabytes for animated GIFs would be my advice. Also make sure to clarify what sort of white space will be baked into your image files and what will be applied using paddings or margins. It's important because without clear guidelines, Colleagues will still be able to mess up a design if they use an image file that has twice the padding than expected. Another important component in email is just pure text. No matter if you are an e-commerce brand and you have a bunch of images in your emails, you will still need to use clearly readable text for product descriptions or large enough headers for titles and also an enjoyable text size for the footer, for example. I would advise you to stick with 16 to 18 pixels for simple paragraphs text size and use a 1.4 to 1.5x multiplier for line heights and for heading sizes. If you want to experiment with uh, different text sizes just go to typescale.com it will help you visualize the different text sizes in comparison to each other. And here comes the button a very important component for email marketers we all want our subscribers to push our lovely call to action buttons no matter what. So when it comes to your design system, just make sure to clearly define your primary, secondary and tertiary buttons. Maybe the tertiary will only be a simple text link. Make sure to formalize the required white space around buttons too and include as many different size and color variations as necessary. Dividers and spacers might not sound that essential to define, but without enough white space, there's no design that would be enjoyable or no text that would be easily readable. So make sure to define them and their usage too. After all, all these little pieces add up into larger, more complex building blocks like headers, footers, image galleries, promo or feedback blocks, for example. These modules will be the main puzzle pieces for your email marketing team members and will be used to create emails in a rapid manner. On this and some of the following slides, you will see a few colorful block examples from Kununu, a lovely German customer of ours. They had a really solid email design system defined in a Figma file that included over 100 different email blocks, such as headers and hero units with various color and alignment variations, as you can see here. 
article blocks with or without buttons and again various alignment variations for all of them. And pretty complex feedback collection blocks paired with different footer variations for example. We prepared these blocks for them based on the Figma file using Chameleon's drag and drop no code email builder interface and they've been happily using these to create their emails on their own ever since. So once you have all the different components and modules defined, I would advise you to create a few purpose-built email templates for your different use cases, such as welcome emails, transactional messages, newsletters, single promotional emails, feedback collection, or certain seasonal campaigns that make sense in your industry. And the final, but still essential part of a design system is a detailed documentation that explains when, where, how to use the different components, modules, and templates. Often overlooked, but extremely necessary for a strong buy-in for your design system is a few getting started guides tailored to different user types, such as marketers, content writers, stakeholders, and designers too. These guides should help them easily understand how they are supposed to use your design system and also help them create on-brand emails without needing to rely on other team members. Let's take a quick look at real-life email design system from Stack Overflow. Thanks to Ted Goss, a fellow email geek, and his team, it's public on the web. Thanks for publishing it, guys. I really appreciate your transparency, especially since it helps fellow email marketers figure out what an email design system should look like. So Stack Overflow's email design system lays out typography first and defines paragraphs, headlines, lists, links, and inline code blocks style at first. There it includes primary, secondary, and outline buttons combined with different button sizes. It clearly defines the image sizes, dimensions, weight, and expected scale too. Since Stack Overflow's site is full of tags, they decided to clearly outline how default and team text should look like in their emails too. And a simple spacer element combined with clear advice on its expected usage. And also there are various footers for their various emails. They differentiate between transactional, subscription, bucketed, branding, and enterprise emails. The their footer variations look quite the same. The only difference is the number of lines it includes. And finally, it includes eight different template examples for transactional and promotional emails and also announcements. What I especially like is that they included clear advice on template usage, so team members can easily decide which one to use for their specific use cases. I'm sure by now you can clearly see why I mentioned that it takes a lot of time to create and maintain a solid email design system. But believe me, those who invested their resources to build one, they are the ones who can now produce emails in a matter of hours instead of weeks. So this investment really pays off. It just saves a ton of designer and developer resources, especially if you go no code and use a software that enables designers and marketers create and maintain your design system without ever needing to write a single line of email HTML. And I promise, you will never need to touch email code again if you use our email creation platform called Chameleon IO. It will enable your designers and marketers to build up your no-code email design system from scratch, or if you need some help, we can build it for you and offer professional training for your team so they'll be able to take over completely and update your design system whenever necessary. Thank you for your time, and I really appreciate that you stayed with me for so long Feel free to email me if you have any additional questions or if you need help with your design system setup. Have a nice one. Um, thank you very much, uh, Roland, for that um, insightful session. Uh, some of us, uh, our heads are, well, we are really digesting the information that uh, you are able to squeeze into uh, such a limited uh, amount of time. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we recognize that um, emails are uh, the major touch points uh, with uh, engagements with our customers. 
all over the world and think it has the highest volume um, of such touch points. So I think this is quite important uh, that we um, understand um, what you're trying to communicate to us. Uh, thank, thank you that you've been engaging uh, uh, for, on the question Q&A uh, column. And um, so um, questions, questions, questions. Um, everyone in the room, please share your questions. Um, while um, I allow Roland to answer a few questions that we can use to um, start up the conversation. Okay, so um, Roland, I, I, I want to ask this question. Can you hear me, Roland? Yes, I can. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Once again. So, um, how much time um, does it take uh, to build up uh, an initial email design system? Uh, from your experiences, uh, from the projects that you handled with regards to other customers, how, how what, what amount of time would it cost to build an initial email design system? I think the the design audit that I mentioned you know, early in the presentation that typically takes. I would say a week or two, but it depends on the team and how many, how much resources they have available. And once the audit is done, I think if, you know, if the team would want to build up the, the selected email blocks, modules, buttons, whatnot, in a tool like Chameleon, that doesn't take too much more than a few days, depending on how, how, experience they are using a drag and drop email design tool. Of course, if they would want to code the templates, then I think it takes at least an additional week or two because there needs to be a tedious testing process, especially connected with you know email rendering, which is a nightmare to be honest with you, especially if you <laughs> if you if you struggle with Outlook and if you use background images, that can become pretty complicated. So I think from a few weeks, it can reach to a few months. Uh, so it, it really depends on the team. All right. All right. Thank you very much for that. Um, also, from your experiences, um, uh, what will you advise businesses or, or, or companies that are represented, firms that are represented in this room? Uh, what, what will be your advice or even the people that, uh, people that are going to stream this particular session after now, what would be your advice with regards to uh, the options of uh, developing or building an email design system in-house or should we, because it's very important as you can see, so um, should we all or should we outsource this particular um, very vital part of, of that will be part of our marketing strategy? Uh, do you advise us to develop the design system in-house or with regards to our emails, uh, or should we outsource uh, this particular um, I think, part uh, of the business? The most teams that I meet with, they typically go for the in-house approach. Uh, of course, that's why I meet them. So they are looking for a solution that they can use in-house to create their design system. <clears throat> but I'm I'm also aware of teams who use the outsourced approach and they work with an agency who manages not necessarily only the design system but the other parts of the email marketing process too. So I think it depends mainly on how a certain team and company aims to work. But I think keeping it in-house makes the process way more efficient. So that's how you can speed up the email creation. That's how you can end up with having a really time and resource efficient process in place. So, but for keeping it in house, you will need a system um, that can help you manage the design system. And also this specific system needs, needs to have certain user roles and uh, responsibilities built in so you will be able to limit certain people, like let's say your designers, to have access to managing the design system while the rest of the team would only be using the pre-designed elements. So I think if you don't have a designer in-house, that's quite likely then you will need to outsource at least a part of it. 
or work with a freelancer who would, you know, just help you build up the design assets at first. And then the rest of the team can take over, especially if they have access to an email creation platform that has some sort of a drag and drop interface built in. All right, thank you very much uh, for that. Um, okay, while we're still waiting for questions, um, I don't know, okay, so I, um, I, I want to ask, um, as a Mautic user, uh, um, how can um, you advise us um, to leverage on uh, what Chameleon does, Chameleon.io, uh, what you offer um, to um, advance uh, our, uh, our uh, email strategy? Like, as a Mautic user, what would, what would be your advice? Um, how can we leverage Chameleon to advance, uh, uh, to optimize more of uh, our email strategy with regards to engaging our uh, customers or other businesses as well? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. So actually with Chameleon, we were always focused on the design aspect of emails. So we built an email design email creation tool that you can create emails without writing code. So the way we typically help teams to optimize their emails is just by enabling them to be able to create more and more variations of a certain email. Because if you can do it, create an A-B test or a different email in a matter of a few minutes, I would say, or let's say 10 minutes, you have a new variation then the marketing team will have much more time to experiment with making changes or to, to their actual emails. And as such, it will be the team who optimizes the emails. At the end of the day, they, we just provide them with the right tool set to be able to flexibly experiment with new types of emails. Or, you know, if, if you want to create, let's say, a seasonal campaign and you have a design system where you fix the colors, then it's really easy to create a new color variation specifically for Valentine's Day or let's say for Christmas time because you just replace the color variable in, in, in your design system and you will have a quite new looking, brand new looking template in a matter of minutes. And without the right tool set, this can take hours or even more to, to do the same kind of tests. So I think our approach has been to, to provide them with the right tool set and some advice that we usually blog about on our site. So with combining the, the tool and the best practices they can find either on our site or you know, on other sites like Mautic, I guess, guys, you, you also have a blog where you teach your users how to be more efficient and how to improve their emails. They can exactly come to do a service like Chameleon and do those optimizations easily without without needing to touch the email code at all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That has been super helpful um, and quite enlightening uh, to understand um, how we why and how we should um, use the email design system uh, that you've been um, working with uh, with your team to um, advance our uh, solutions and the email email marketing improve the return on investment with regards to our email marketing. This is quite. Um, I think anyone here will uh, agree with me that this session has been super helpful. Yeah, thank you very much, Roots. Uh, for acknowledging that. So uh, you're getting some feedback uh, on the chat uh, that uh, I think I just read it out. Great session. Thank you, Roland. Some great suggestions, which I'm sure will be super helpful to people. So we really appreciate um, um, if, if you have other contributions, I think, uh, because um, uh, questions are, I don't think we're getting more questions. So um, if you have, um, more contributions um, with regards to this. So I think we still have a few minutes. Um, you can, you can, can just help us uh, provide some maybe action points or something like that. Yeah. Thank you. 
without, if you don't, uh, I think we can wrap it up and, uh, and also call it a day. Yeah, I think I shared with the, share the slides with you, with the audience. I think you will publish the recording too, right? So those who yeah. just missed the session, I think the recording will be live. Uh, Chuck knows it then. <laughs> but if if you need any more information from my end, just feel free to email me. I'm going to add my email address here to the chat. So you can get in touch with me. I can send you the slides. And I think even the recording link later on, if you managed to miss if you miss this event by chance. So I think we are okay for now. If not, let me know. I can jump in and answer any of your questions Roland, right now or yeah, Roland, later. I want to ask, uh, please, um, can you also drop your social media handles uh, so we can, okay. uh, we can see it and engage with you? If you're on any of the social media platforms, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, you know, so we can can always connect and take it right. off from there. As well. I'm just yeah, thank you. Your links, so we can we can keep in touch. I'm an email person, so I will check my email faster than LinkedIn or <laughs> or, oh, <that's> yeah. <laughs> or Twitter. So feel free to email me, and I think once the recording goes live, it will go out to. Even those participants who, who were not in this session, but they still joined the conference. So if that happens, and you know, there's somebody who has interest in in building up their um, email design system and need help, they'll be here. All right. Thank you very much, Roland, for your time. It was very interesting talking with you, and um, we look forward to more engagement um, um, from here onwards. All right, do yeah. have a great day at Hungary. Um, we wish you all the best from here. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody, have a nice one. Yeah, so thanks everyone. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, we can always connect to Roland as you've seen uh, us share his um, email, um, his and his email, his email address we're sharing uh, on, on the screen and also his um, LinkedIn um, profile. We will also share his Twitter, his Twitter handle. So you can always um, connect with Roland and have an amazing um, experience. We'll, we'll, it's, it's, it's important to leverage on, on this uh, for, to take our business forward and um, help our email marketing strategy uh, to be more precise and um, optimized as well. Thank you very much. We appreciate your session. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.